so. What now? Global real estate participants are already adding those three elements together to create new businesses, pull together new investor groups, um, and to change the way real estate is being bought, the way it's being sold, the way it's being marketed, the way it's being administered, the way it's being financed. Um, it's happening in the US and the UK. Uh, it's embryonic in places like Singapore and Hong Kong, as I mentioned. There are 84 platforms globally, 85, sorry, platforms globally, and a number of others that, that plan to launch in the US and the UK over the next 12 months. Um, real estate crowdfunding is the fastest growing category of crowdfunding globally. And in terms of the history of growth and forecast of growth, it looks a little bit like this. From a standing start in 2011, um, volumes of investment through real estate crowdfunding platforms in 2012 hit 19 million, right? That's not a lot of money. The following year, nearly 20 times as much. I know it's a low base, still, the increase is significant. Then in 2014, it hit just over a billion dollars, which is 150 odd percent increase year on year. And the forecast for 2015, this is Mass Solutions forecast, is that it will hit um, 2.5 billion. But what's more exciting is, over the next five years, Mass Solution, this is their most recent 2015 report, um, forecasts that real estate crowdfunding volumes will increase to 250 billion in the next five years. There are lots of different variations, lots of different variations. Um, I have tried to sort of simplify how models are put together in real estate crowdfunding with this diagram. And basically, you know, this is very, very simplified, but basically it is a combination of choose your category, choose your stage, choose your security, and mix and match those elements to get the model. And you'll see what I mean by that um, when, we, when Tim speaks about um, venture crowd property, and I'll give you a couple of examples of some commercial ones. Venture crowd property, for example, category right now, residential. Um, the stage right now is off the plan, and the security right now is pure equity. Right, but um, one of some of the ones I'll talk to you about will also include commercial real estate that already exists, is already tenanted, um, and and where the, the instrument is actually debt. So there's a number of ways that your model can be mixed and matched to create um, nuanced, specialised, targeted offerings, and this is likely to to happen. The other thing I think is worth, worth sharing with you is that um, in the first three quarters of 2014, US venture capitalists invested um, more in real estate startups than they have since 2000. $118 million went into um, 11 different companies. That's a higher volume in more companies than, um, than since 2000, according to Dow Jones Venture Source. In the third quarter alone, $64.8 million was put into six companies. Um, that is the highest number of deals, the largest amount invested into real estate startups since 2000. So the US foreign investors in the US, foreign investors and US VCs are very interested in taking their share of this growing market. And you can see that by the amount of money that's being pumped into real estate crowdfunding platforms, particularly there. There's two that I wanna share with you. Um, of that 118 million we just talked about in FY14, 41 million was invested in two uh, real estate crowdfunding platforms. One is Realty Shares, who just did a, um, a Series A raise for $10 million, um, and Fundrise, who just, just closed a Series A raise for $31 million. The thing that's interesting about those two is who was investing, right? So with Realty Shares, um, that round was led, led by Menlo Ventures, a well-known um, high-profile US VC. It had previous investor um, was General Catalyst Partners um, and 500 startups, the, the Troy McClure uh, business. So high profile people looking at and investing in um, those platforms in the States wanting to take their share. Fundrise is even more interesting to me. It's a much bigger number for a Series A. So someone's taking a real punt on that business. It was led by Chinese social networking giant, Renren. So the number of global platforms are growing, the volume, of investment being transacted through real estate crowdfunding platforms is forecast to grow and to grow significantly over the next five years to $250 billion by 2020. And the interest in these platforms from global um, venture capital and institutional investors is rising. Um, so what are the opportunities for the Australian market? Here's what um, I, I see happening over the next five years for Australia. First of all, 
there will be an increase in the number of real estate crowdfunding platforms in Australia. It all initially started in residential. That makes sense. That's something that the particular target market understands. And it will take those early operators um, a little bit of time to educate the market about this new way of investing in property, right? And it will take the market some time to understand that they can trust this process. So residential makes perfect sense. Secondly, I think we're going to see more interest from um, property developers and other vendors of property um, as a means of basically selling their stock. Um, from a property developer's perspective, and maybe John can share a bit more on this, that is going to be driven primarily by, um, by price and by the perceived value or lack of value that's provided by, by project marketing um, agencies who are charging the current market somewhere between 4 and 8%. I think that the early adopters into real estate crowdfunding will be SMSFs um, and investors who are currently priced out of the market. The one that's most interesting to me is SMSFs because if I have a $300,000 or $400,000 SMSF self-managed super fund and I want to put $10,000 into property, I have very limited options. I can invest in a REIT where I have no choice and I pay management fees. Not a bad option if you want to be a passive investor, but it's pretty much the only option that I can think of. Otherwise, Real estate crowdfunding platforms, if they get it right, um, will be able to facilitate choice, control, um, licks of money that you choose, right? Making it possible for SMSFs to build diversified portfolios for small amounts of money. Now, I think that education is going to take some time, but I think SMSFs will be the logical first adopters. Um, and finally, model variation. Over the next five years, you'll see, I think, um, platforms that have clearly differentiated offerings, whether it's you know, debt for commercial, whether it's um, equity for development, whether it's off the plan, whether it's you know, um, buy and hold resi. So um, if you are a property developer or a real estate agency or a property investor or a financier, my message to you this morning is very simple. Netflix is here. Um, and it's either a threat or it's an opportunity to your business. Um, but, you, but I wouldn't be waiting too long to decide strategically what that means for your business and how to either engage with it um, or, or build it in.